Distortion Maniacs, it's Pete Thorne. Check it out from the mind of Mr. Brian Wampler, The Rat's Bane. His take on the classic rodent distortion from the 80s. 80s or 70s? I think it might have been out in the 70s, but I'm not 100% sure. Brian would know when it came out. But anyways, it became popular in the 80s, that's for sure. And it was always kind of one of the original... Uh, well, one of the only distortion pedals you could get back then, that's for sure. But one of the original, I always think of it as a stack in a box or Marshall in a box style pedals, but it could also get downright fuzzy uh, if you turn up the distortion and control. And so it was real versatile, actually, and, and a very, very cool pedal used by Jeff Beck and all kinds of people back in the day. So Brian's taken that design and kind of updated it. The, the controls that carry over are the distortion amount control, the filter, really, really powerful filter control that lets this pedal work through just about any amp. Uh, and then the volume control. But Brian's added this three position gain switch that makes it really easy to dial in the distortion amount. I always found on the original that it was a little tough sometimes to find like the true sort of stack in a box or like almost like overdrive characteristics. Easy to get into that heavy distortion or fuzz territory, but if you wanted it to sound a little bit more like a cranked up Marshall, it could be tough to find. Well, it's pretty easy on this pedal now with this three position gain switch. Lowest gain is in the middle. And I like that setting a lot. And then you got more gain to the left and even more crazy amounts of like basically fuzz once you switch it all the way to the right position. Uh, then you get a two position voicing switch here. And that evidently switches up the clipping characteristics, the compression. I also hear it as changing the voice of the pedal. In the furthest left position, it sounds more scoop to me and kind of like a full range sound. And then in the furthest right position, it seems like more mid forward, maybe geared towards like lead parts and single notes and stuff like that, but also works great for chords too. Uh, so, all right, so what I want to do is play more through the pedal, turn the knobs, hit the switches, all that good stuff. I even used it on bass on that track at the beginning of the video in, in front of an SVT amp sim in, in my uh, Universal Audio interface. Um, so I'm going to show you what I did on bass because I think it works great on bass. Uh, and I'm also going to uh, solo some more of those parts from the song at the beginning of the video outside the mix. You can hear those really clear. Okay, let's get on with it. It's the Rat's Bane from Wampler. <laughs> I recorded all the guitar parts in the song with my old Ibanez Destroyer and I was playing through the clean channel of my PT100 back here uh, set basically totally clean and uh, you know it's like a twin meets a super essentially so if you've got anything in the you know fender vein it's really really going to be similar to that sound that I recorded all the guitar parts for this video through <laughs> Just a little aside here for the bass players. I know there's not a lot of you out there, but if you are there, I love these on bass. Rats on bass were always a great thing to me. 
Uh, it's a great pedal that if you set just right, you can get a beautiful grind and you don't really need to do the two amp thing where you've got a clean amp and a dirty amp, at least not for a kind of down and dirty, cool, fuzzy punk rock tone that's still got clarity. So the trick is use the gain control in the center position, lowest gain position, and um, you got to be careful about how high you turn up the distortion amount or the gain control. Um, you, you just have to, it's very touchy and sort of the difference between like say eight and nine o'clock is huge and you might lose too much clarity if you go too far with it. So here's with no pedal. I like that sound. I've always liked the you know original rat pedals on bass, and this one works great. So I'm definitely going to use it on bass sometimes. It's it's cool for bass. Okay, let's turn the knobs, hit the switches, all that good stuff. So I've got the pedal set up right now for kind of the most amp-like gain sound that I've that I've heard out of it, and it sounds actually really good for this sound. Check it out. <laughs> It does that sound really good, and the original pedals did too. I mean, I always think of the original ones as kind of the original amp in a box pedal. They sort of were trying to copy that Marshall kind of distortion thing, I think. Uh, although they could get really fuzzy, just like this one can, if you turn up the gain and use it in the highest gain position. But at lower gain settings, you'll notice I've got the gain control here down around um, 9 o'clock. You can definitely get more like amp-like overdrive out of it, and it's pretty damn credible sounding. Okay, so right now I've got the voicing switch set to the right, which is kind of um, got a little bit more mids to me, and supposedly it changes the, the compression characteristics and stuff too. Let me flip it to the left, and you'll hear what that sounds like. <laughs> So this is the sound I used for the right rhythm guitar in the song at the beginning of the video, almost exactly this setting, I think. And I'm always thinking when I'm doing pedal demos and I gotta do like multiple parts with the same pedal, use the more scooped sounds for uh, the rhythm guitars and leave the MIDI sounds for the lead guitars and that's gonna make the lead guitars poke through. So that's exactly what I did on this song. Used more gain and the sort of more, what I hear of as more full through the mids position on the voice switch for the lead guitars. So this sounds really cool to me and, and tough. <laughs> Okay, so let's move the filter control now, because this is probably, besides, you know, the volume, the most powerful control on the pedal. You can see why I ended up with it at right about 1.30 or so, because it's it's like a fine line, but you always kind of, it's kind of like a big muff, where you find your, your voice with that, whatever they call the tone control on a big muff. Uh, you know, you just turn that filter control until it sounds good with the amp you're using. If you're using a dark amp, this pedal has you covered. If you're using a really bright amp, it's got you covered, because you can shut down the top end all the way. <laughs> Okay, with the different positions on the gain switch, let's see how much more gain we can add and how it changes the voice. And you can hear it sort of fattens up and instantly you sort of lose the tight and it gets into fuzz territory, which is cool for some stuff, for sure. This is more like the sound that I used on the left channel rhythm guitar on the song at the beginning of the Okay, I combine that more fuzzy tone with um, the more clear, articulate, lower gain position on the gain switch, and 
you know, panned them out and that worked really well. Now for the most gain, you put the switch all the way to the right and it gets insane. Keep in mind, for all of this, I've got the distortion control at 9 o'clock. I mean, there's tons of gain. There was in the originals, too. Just like tons and tons, oodles of gain. It's a fuzz at that setting, you know? <laughs> no doubt, it's a full-on fuzz at that setting. So. Anywhere from that amp like overdrive to that big, big, fat, fuzzy tone that the original ones got, this thing can do. Thanks for watching my video on the Ratsbane from Mr. Brian Wampler, Wampler Pedals. Terrific sounding uh, take on that original 80s rodent distortion pedal with a few new twists. And of course, he made it small. That's cool. I didn't even mention that. It's tiny, so it's going to fit on just about any pedal board. You can check it out further at the link down there in the video description below. And uh, click down there. It'll take you to all the info you can ever want to know about that pedal. Please hit subscribe if you haven't. Hit the little bell beside the subscribe. You'll get an alert when I put out a new video. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. I'm Pete Thorne. Take care.